Welcome to the precinct of the 70s hit TV series, where the drab walls of the 12th precinct serve as the backdrop for the humor and camaraderie of Barney Miller. When did you first step into the precinct with Detective Barney Miller and his eclectic team? Or perhaps, which classic Hollywood actor among the ensemble cast became your favorite? As we delve into the intriguing world of this iconic show, let's not forget to share our most cherished memories or personal experiences related to this TV series. Your stories are the heartbeat of the community, and we would love to hear them in the comments below. Now, let's set the stage for some random facts about the show. Did you know that the series defied the conventions of the typical cop drama, opting for a character-driven narrative that resonated with audiences? Each character brought a unique flavor to the precinct, making it a blend of humor, wit, and genuine human connection. Share your thoughts and experiences with us and let the memories flow. Your voice adds depth to the legacy of this classic TV series. Max Gale, who played Bet, Sergeant 3rd Grade Stanley Wojo Wojciechowicz, faced an unusual situation during the audition and filming of Barney Miller. He lost most of his hair, leading to the use of a hairpiece for his role. This unique aspect added an interesting touch to his character throughout the series. As the show progressed, Danny Arnold, the creator, found himself in a creative slump during the final season. Acknowledging the shortage of ideas, he openly admitted that the show's staff, along with their kids, became contributors to the scripts. This collaborative effort brought a different flavor to the later episodes of Barney Miller. Notably, Gregory Sierra, who portrayed Det, Sergeant Chano Amenguil, brought cultural diversity to the show. Being of Puerto Rican descent and fluent in Spanish, Sierra added a distinct layer to his character and the series as a whole. These behind-the-scenes details provide a glimpse into the challenges and innovations that shaped the 1975 TV series Barney Miller. From Max Gale's unique on-set situation to the collaborative script writing in the final season and Gregory Sierra's cultural contribution, the series unfolded with its own set of intriguing stories. Before joining the iconic ensemble cast of Barney Miller, Steve Landisberg, and Ron Carey made appearances as felons in guest-starring roles. Interestingly, Landisberg had a background in stand-up comedy, showcasing a different facet of his talent before becoming a regular on the series. During the show's run, the producers received proposals for a feature film based on Barney Miller, featuring the original cast. Despite these discussions, the film never materialized, leaving fans to ponder what could have been an extension of the beloved TV series onto the big screen. These behind-the-scenes glimpses add depth to the legacy of Barney Miller, showcasing the diverse talents and potential expansions that surrounded the show. From Landisberg's transition from stand-up comedy to acting and the missed opportunity for a feature film, the series not only entertained on screen, but also harbored untold stories behind the camera. In its early days, Barney Miller faced a significant shakeup from its original pilot. Titled Barney Miller, the life and times of Barney Miller, the initial cast, excluding Hal Linden and Abe Vigoda, was entirely replaced for the subsequent series. Notably, Val Bisoglio, originally Sergeant Grimaldi, expected to transition to the regular series, but was replaced by Jack Sue's Nick Yamana due to concerns about Bisoglio's past roles. This change set the stage for the distinct ensemble that became synonymous with the show. Amid the iconic police station set, two props stood out the chalkboard and the scarred cell door. These items, used to mark duty status and depict the station environment, found a post-show home at the Smithsonian Television Museum. The chalkboard not only featured character names, but also paid homage to the crew members. In addition, the museum proudly houses police badges and Jack Sue's coffee mug, connecting the tangible remnants of the show's legacy. A fascinating twist in the series involves Harris' undercover operation to produce a porn film. The alias Starry Night Productions used by Harris found an unexpected afterlife. Show writer Reinhold Weege adopted the name for his production company, later responsible for the creation of Night Court. This unique connection between storylines and real-world production adds a layer of intrigue to the show's evolution. From cast transformations to symbolic props, finding a home in a renowned museum, and the unexpected crossover of fictional aliases into real production, these behind-the-scenes facets contribute to the rich tapestry of Barney Miller's history, underscoring its lasting impact on television. While Florence Halep gained fame on the show and later starred in Night Court, 
There were several cross-cast members in both series, including Jack Delian, Stanley Brock, Kenneth Tigger, Phil Leeds, and Florence Stanley. Some of these recurring actress-actresses later made appearances in Reinhold Weege's Night Court. The original pilot, titled Barney Miller, The Life and Times of Barney Miller, faced rejection by ABC. Initially aired as a special in 1974, it got a second chance after director John Rich, impressed by the pilot, negotiated its revival as part of his deal with ABC. Despite Rich leaving the show after two episodes due to disagreements with producer Danny Arnold, the series went on to become a TV classic. The 12th precinct of Barney Miller fame, though a fictional setting, has left a lasting mark beyond the TV screen. Its reconstruction became a backdrop for the cop show Castle, showcasing the precinct's enduring influence on police procedural dramas. Interestingly, the NYPD hasn't had a 12th precinct since the late 1910s, emphasizing the purely fictional nature of Barney Miller's precinct. This departure from reality adds a layer of intrigue to the show's legacy. Moreover, 13 episodes dared to venture outside the familiar police station setting, offering viewers a glimpse into different facets of the characters' lives and the challenges they faced. These departures from the norm brought a dynamic element to the series, breaking away from the conventional police procedural format. From the precinct's afterlife in Castle to the rare excursions beyond its walls, Barney Miller's impact extends beyond the realm of fiction, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of television cop dramas. Jack Su, who played Nick Yamana on the iconic TV series, faced a challenging period during filming. Battling cancer, Su was absent for several episodes, but managed to return briefly before succumbing to the illness at age 61. His struggle and eventual return added a poignant layer to the series. In a departure from typical TV formats, Barney Miller broke the mold by adopting a theatrical play style. The entire show, except for 13 episodes, was deliberately staged on one set at the ABC Television Center. This unique approach, featuring the squad room, office, and even the restroom, set the series apart, offering a consistent backdrop for the unfolding police dramas. Originally taped before a live audience, the show's early episodes had a vibrant energy. However, in a shift from convention, later episodes eliminated this live element. Despite the change, the show's legacy continued, showcasing the evolution of its production style. From Jack Sue's poignant battle with cancer to the unconventional one-set approach and the initial live audience format, Barney Miller carved its place in television history, proving that innovation and emotional depth can coexist in the realm of cop dramas. As we wrap up our nostalgic journey through the labyrinth of memories that is Barney Miller, I urge you to pause and reflect. The Precinct at 12 and Greenwich wasn't just a backdrop for witty banter and comedic genius. It was a haven where the quirky characters and their antics forged a timeless connection with our hearts. Now, as you sit in the afterglow of this classic TV series, let the echoes of its laughter and camaraderie resonate within you. The charm of Barney Miller lies not only in its humor, but in the humanity it effortlessly captured. How many times did you find solace in the familiar faces of those detectives, each with their unique quirks and endearing flaws? Take a moment to wander down memory lane, revisit those uproarious moments that left you in stitches or the poignant scenes that tugged at your heartstrings. Were you a fan of Fish's deadpan delivery or Wojciechowicz's bumbling charm? Perhaps Harris' quick wit struck a chord or Dietrich's enigmatic coolness left you in awe. Now, let's extend this conversation beyond the confines of our own reflections. Share your treasured Barney Miller memories with fellow enthusiasts and let the anecdotes flow like the dialogue in the squad room. Did the show teach you valuable life lessons or simply serve as a comforting escape during trying times? The beauty of Barney Miller lies not just in watching, but in sharing the experience. Thank you for joining us on this trip down memory lane for embracing the humor and heart that Barney Miller gifted us. Your reflections are the threads that weave the rich tapestry of appreciation for this iconic series. Until we meet again, remember the precinct doors may be closed, but the memories linger on.